first of all, Salma Becker, congratulations. Fantastic. I hope it's a wonder hope it's been a wonderful day. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dave. I'm your uh, remote best man today. Um, I'm going to try and keep this fairly short because I have no idea whether you're pissed or not and whether any of my jokes are going down very well. Yeah. Power's in my hands, but it's a bit weird. I did a wee bit of research when Sam asked me to be his best man. I did a, spent hours of my employer's valuable time digging around on that great global repository of knowledge, Google. And here's roughly what I discovered. The role of best man is very important. You take on a lot of responsibility for the success or otherwise of the biggest day in one of your closest friend's lives. Which sounds great. And then I thought about it a bit more and everything I came every every role I came across, across hit upon a problem. Sam. There's the stag to organise but Sam knew exactly what he wanted to do from the get-go. All he needed to find was a racetrack, some horses, and a bookie who was happy to take his hard-earned money. Then there's the groomsmen to organise, but quite frankly, if there's one thing Sam doesn't need, it's help in uh, bullying underlings into doing his bidding, as I'm sure his uh, minions in the restaurant will attest. Then there's the speech but as is, I'm sure, becoming painfully apparent quite quickly, I'm a horrible public speaker, and I would only end up making, some, making up some absolute rubbish. And it just didn't sound like fun. And then it hit me. The best man is the ring bearer. So I've come here to Middle Earth to step up to the plate. I've known Samwise Kemmer since we were maybe 14 or 15 years old. Julian Henderson and I were pulling together one of the many bands that we all started and we needed a singer. Jules said he knew this mental metaler who'd be absolutely perfect for the job. So we went around to see him after school one day at his mum's place. I was slightly shocked to discover that the mental metaler that I was expecting was this little long-haired dude with uh, big boots. However, he made the strongest coffee I've ever tasted and he had metal and punk albums by people I'd never heard of, so I thought he rocked. He was also the cleverest bastard I've ever met, I think. Straight A's pretty much the whole way through, and seemingly entirely without trying, much to my annoyance. I feel very privileged to be his best man today. Sam makes good friends and keeps them. So I think the role really could have gone to any one of a number of boys that are here. But I think the reason I got the job is because I was there at what was for the purposes of this lecture, the start. Sam and I shared a flat together for about two years. And it was over this period that he and Becca were realising that they were meant to be together. It wasn't always a fast process, but it was, kind of, lovely to watch. It all began in the subway, God rest its soul. Actually, that's not quite true. Becca, one of your lovely bridesmaids for the day, introduced them in the Bell Angel, also since demised. Anyway, they soon tired of dodgy drum and bass and went looking for cheesy pop. I never really could understand how Sam could flick so effortlessly between the spikiest, angriest tunes known to man and S Club 7, but hey ho. Anyway, off they went to the subway, despite Becca's warnings to be careful of that one. And on the dance floor there, a kind of magic happened to the tunes of S Club 7's Reach. I don't know that there's much I can tell you about Sam that you won't already know, to be honest. If you don't know his love of cheesy pop, especially Five, then you soon will. I think he'd started planning the playlist for this evening before he even popped the question. He claims to know all the words of Bad Touch by the Bloodhound Gang, by the way. Perhaps after li this little video, he'll perform for you all. How sad I am not to be there. If any of you don't know his feelings about food, then this little tape is obviously playing before dinner. Man, you're in for a treat. But I think it's worth mentioning that, for a wee dude, he can put away more butter and salt than you'd think was physically possible. I remember his shock when a colleague of his asked how long you could keep butter in the fridge before it went off. I don't think it ever occurred to me that there would be anything left in a pack after a day and a half. When we found dead mice in our flat, the only sensible explanation for cause of death was that they died of cholesterol poisoning from our leftover potato gratin. Sometimes I'd come in from after work and find him eating raw mince in the kitchen. And man, he is messy. It used to be a point of pride to him that you couldn't find the floor in his room. 
quite often we'd cook up dinner parties in the flat. They'd always start out civilised and lovely. A couple of bottles of nice wine, some fantastic food. But usually by the end of seconds, and I always had seconds, things would take a turn for the worse. You get distracted for a minute and drop your guard and suddenly you've got half a shoulder of lamb bouncing off the side of your face from the other side of the room. But it always turned into all-out war and it always got silly. By morning we'd be cleaning profanities marched in a rich and tasty mushroom sauce off the walls wondering how we got the leg of lamb out from under the freezer. And he's a devious little bugger too. I remember cleaning myself up after one particularly brutal scrap. Aaron, I'm pretty sure you were involved in that one. Stepping out of the shower, walking across the hallway and into my room, only to discover that he'd hidden a bag of flour on top of my door, which literally turned to paste on me. I never really got the whole football thing, but I'm sure Fraser or Rob will be able to fill you in more on that part of his life. What I do know is that I would try and put up art on the walls in our flat and come home and find that he'd nailed heart stops over the top of them. I was going to say I sound like his wife now, but I'm pretty sure Ecop was there holding the hammer. That was a great time in my life in many ways, and I really like the fact that when we moved out of that flat, it was still covered in flour and glitter. Sam goes at Christmas decorating like a retarded magpie, by the way, and isn't satisfied until the end result is in it, all its sparkly, flashing glory, totally seizure-inducing. And now, for what appears to be the final duties of the best man, the toasts. I'd like you all to charge your glasses, please. Firstly, for your bridesmaids. Unfortunately, this video link doesn't go both ways but I'm sure you're looking absolutely stunning today. And secondly, to the happy couple, Sam and Becca, I'd like to wish you both the very best for, the, for your future together. I'm gutted I can't be there with you today, but I'm sure you have a fantastic day, and I wish you a long and happy life together. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.